want to start by asking, what are, what are some associations that you might have with vulnerability? What's a word that you associate with it? Just call it out. Openness. Openness. Fear. Fear. Risk. Weakness. Risk. Weakness. Strength. Strength. Runs the gamut, right? Trust. Trust is one of them as well. Courage. Courage is another one as well. Change. Change. So lots of different associations. Pain, I hear. Danger, I hear. A lot of times, it's hard to access the more positive aspects of vulnerability. A lot of people think of vulnerability as something that, you know, we they're kind of afraid of a little bit. Every person has strengths that they things that they can do really well, like like skateboarding and, and drawing and, and running committee meetings, right? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> and every person has times and situations when they may not feel like they're so good at it, you know, when they may not feel quite so strong. Now, I want to talk about animals for a minute. When animals are afraid, what do they do? One at a time, please. What, what do some animals do? Shake. Some animals might shake. What else? Run. Some animals run away. <laughs> Some animals will hide. They'll camouflage themselves. Some animals play dead. Some animals might might attack. They might bite or they might hiss or growl. Can I hear some hissing and growling? Some animals will even shoot poison. <laughs> like there are certain snakes and toads that will do that, right, when they're afraid or when they feel attacked. And what's really interesting is that human beings do some of the very same things, right? Sometimes we do, so we might run away, we might, we might just hide, we might, we might shoot, po not real poison, but we might use poisonous words when we're feeling a little bit vulnerable. Humans can do some of the very same things, but one of the things about human beings is that we actually have more options than that. As human beings, when we feel vulnerable, we can actually talk about our vulnerabilities, and we can learn from the past, and we can decide whether or not what we're afraid of is really something to be afraid of, or something that, that maybe we can actually manage. And we can remind each other of our strengths, of our values and our spiritual practices. And one of the spiritual practices that can really help when we're feeling vulnerable and afraid is deep breathing, conscious deep breathing. Note our model here. <laughs> deep breathing is one of the resources that we can do. It helps relax our muscles and our central nervous system. And when we do that, it can actually help us think more clearly. So if we're feeling afraid or vulnerable or maybe afraid that we're not strong enough, taking a few moments to breathe and calm ourselves a little bit can help us think more clearly about what's the best thing to do? What are some of the choices that we have? So at this time, I want us to just take a few moments to breathe together. And then when I ring the bowl, I invite the children to leave the sanctuary with Astrid and Colleen for religious exploration. The rest of us are going to stay here and continue breathing. <laughs> and then we'll hear some music. So just a moment of breathing. Keep breathing. 